Hi, everybody, and welcome to our latest Learning with Fourth Digital Adult Education video. My name is Ember Kelly. I am the Director of Religious Education here at Fourth Universalist Society, and I use she and her pronouns. And I'm so excited to once, be, once again be joined by the undefeatable, the undeniable, I'm trying to think <laughs> some good uh, adjectives here, uh, Ben Haney, our intern, who is also uh, leading our small groups, which is uh, really heavily involved with some of the same questions that we're uh, considering in these uh, adult eds, so uh, adult ed videos. So thank you so much, Ben, for for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a great time to be here, and I really love being involved with the small groups. They've been really rich conversations, and so it's fun to be able to explore a little bit of it more in a different context. Right. I, I'm intrigued. So, you know, this, this month's theme is a little bit different with renewing faith. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what am I, what am I going to come up with for, for yeah. talking about in a video? But as, as you and I prepared, we came up and you, 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 you all will already know this because it will be the title of the video, but we came up with the theme millennials, zillennials and growing older, because there's two questions in the small group packet um, yeah. that were, particularly of interest to me as we reflected on this idea of, of renewing faith. And that is, there's the question of, has your faith in humanity increased or decreased as you've grown older? Mm -hmm. And has a late age allowed you to be more or less faithful to your true self? So I was born in 88, very solidly millennial, like, mm -hmm. you know, grew up by the time, uh, to, to me, the, the biggest definer, when, when I just define millennial in my mind, you had to have been in school, whether that was preschool, kindergarten, um, for 9-11. Mm -hmm. um, that is when I, I feel like that is the like cultural, uh, you, were, you were somewhere between yeah. kindergarten and like early college uh, when that happened. And that's I'd millennial. That. I'd agree with that. Yeah, I was in kindergarten. Right. And so I would have been in, I think it was in eighth grade. Um, and so um, a very solidly millennial, but you are right on that cusp of, of where things are a little bit different. I, yeah, I'm um, just like prime zillennial territory. I'm right in the, um, the, the liminal space of, uh, of 1996. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, I'm, I have a younger sister who was born in 91 and there was times that even mm -hmm. uh, honestly, that three year age difference felt like a lot in terms of like technological things like the, the social media pressure for her in high school was way different oh. than it was for me. Um, like, you know, yeah. I had I had Zanga, um, <laughs> but um, I, and, you know, actual I mean, in middle school, I was actually designing my own websites, but that's a. That's a story for another day. Um. Yeah, I remember as a kid having dial-up internet for a while. Like I, I remember, you know, my folks having the physical, you know, telephone cables that went down into their um, their home offices and saying things that would make no sense to people in, you know, who are four years, you know, people who were freshmen in college when I was graduating, you know, things like hang up the phone, I need to check my email. Right. And, <laughs> I was going to say the, the back, back, back in the day back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when, yeah. when you had to fight between the phone line and the, and the internet. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember those days. Mm -hmm. I remember when, when Facebook came out, like I was, you know, use, I, I was like well integrated with Facebook before right. the timeline version came out yeah, oh gosh so, i i got on it my freshman year of college was the year that you still had to have a student email to to join it so it's for colleges only at the time still what's the first viral youtube video that you remember or the first like big youtube video the i the thing is is that i was a bit too involved with like the internet in general that like mm -hmm. beyond YouTube, I remember like the meme websites. You're you're the man now, dog. I don't know if that one um, rings any bells. That was just like animated gifs with like sounds, um, okay. like and like the all your base are belong to us. These you know yes. these are these are these are my childhood. <laughs> gotcha. So it wasn't even YouTube videos yet. Um, but I mean, so you know, even just with the the eight years difference between us, like there's. 
there's a lot of similarities, but there is also these differences. And it's, it's amazing. I've, yeah. I've mentioned recently to, uh, I mean, probably quite a few different people, um, but that I think that 100, 200 years from now, um, you know, pending global climate catastrophe, um, <laughs> that, that we, uh, we're in the middle of a technological change that we just don't even like have the remotest ability to grasp. Yeah, bigger than the industrial revolution. Right, yeah. bigger than the printing press, bigger like the, to have all of this information at our fingertips, also all of this misinformation at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. It's something that we, we'd, it'll take, you know, they'll be, they'll be writing uh, graduate theses in the year 2120 about like, yeah. about the memes of the early 2000s. Um, it's a change in what it means to be human. It's right. a change in, in, in personhood. Yeah, right. yeah. It's, it's different. So let's now that we've established our our age range, and so any of yeah. our older uh, viewers, you know, I'm sorry that in comparison we are young. <laughs> um, I you know what now that I've entered my 30s, I do have plenty enough aching bones, though. So at least you know I got that going for me. And <laughs> while while these may look blonde, this is actually some gray streaks here. So I think I can speak a little bit about aging if I have grays on the side, right? Yeah. See, there we go. We're qualified. Achy bones, gray streaks. We're oh, very yeah. Um, so I'm curious with these two topics, how has your faith in humanity increased or decreased as you've grown older? I'm curious, what, what would you say? Has it increased or decreased? I don't, there have been, there have been times when I felt like it was decreasing and there have also been times when it felt like it was increasing. But I think I would actually say that it has relocated more than it has become any, any greater or lesser. I think it has moved from the traditional centers of power. And I, I don't look to, you know, the, the like, prevailing powerful institutions as a barometer of you know the how how humans are doing morally your faith but, is more in like average people and not in the, these exactly. institutions yeah and so like in in terms of the generational conversation you know when um I, um, I went to college in Minnesota and I have most of my extended family there. And so I was really following the, um, the uprising in response to George Floyd's murder very, very closely. And that's one of those situations where I think a lot of people who look to, um, you know, those, those traditional power centers felt very, um, pessimistic or even nihilistic about humanity. But I saw my friends back in the Twin Cities, I was living in DC at the time, just immediately getting organized and going out into the streets um, to protest against this, doing jail support, doing all kinds of you know important work to respond to that. And then as those protests spread across, across the country, this is where the, the generational thing comes in. I was talking to my parents and um, who, are, who are both baby boomers. And my dad grew up in DC during the civil rights movement. And he, we were talking on the phone and he just, he had this like kind of upbeat tone to his voice. And he was like, there's a lot of white people out there. And it was like really, it was very different from how um, how the protest movement had looked when he was a kid. It was more more diverse, and I think that that's um, that's a really positive thing. And it's it's important for us to observe that and to know that that's somewhere that we can locate our faith, like is in these popular movements that are bringing people together to try to create a more just world. I think that there is a strong conscience somewhere to be found. Uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I think that it's a little bit inspiring in some senses. I was trying to think about where, how I'd rank it myself. So, I mean, the thing is growing up evangelical and like the, the hardcore 
right wing evangelical of the mm -hmm. 90s and early 2000s. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's still around. It's morphed a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But growing up in that, I mean, you got a, a pretty pessimistic view of humanity and of the fate of the yeah. world. And you're just waiting for like the rapture at that point. The, the world is about wow. to end. And we know what's the, what's the point. We just got to save as many people as we can. But that's all we can do. The world's everyone's horrible. So, you know, it's a very low view of humanity. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think in a, in a theological sense, I've definitely uh, improved. Um, and, uh, I, if anything, um, you know, I, I joke that I am, um, what, what have I said? I'm a, I'm a Trinitarian Universalist in the Unitarian Universal, Universalist Association. Mm -hmm. um, only on, you know, my, my theological beliefs are all over the place these days. But one of the things that I find richest from, from yeah. Christian theology is the, is the Christian theologies that have really strong ideas of like incarnation, because it speaks about yeah. humanity and it speaks about having a belief that humanity isn't inherently condemned, isn't inherently screwed over, isn't inherently going to mess everything up, but that the divine wanted to be human amongst us. I mean, which is a story that a lot of the ancient myths also tell that, you know, that the gods wanted to like walk amongst men, like there wasn't uh, a huge separation. So I think in, in, in a theological sense, I've definitely um, improved my faith in humanity. Um, mm. But, you know, I, I do also wonder if there's times that, so I, I came out of that evangelical world into like the, I was, I was the biggest Obama fan and uh, I, I was, posting all about it on Facebook, like, hey, mm -hmm. guys, in the 2008 election, you should vote for Obama. And um, having friends comment being like, no way that he that he beats Hillary for the primary. Um, <laughs> so I was the original. I was I was there back in my day. Um, I remember writing a current events report about Senator Obama, because I grew up in Illinois, and right? I remember writing a current events report uh, in elementary school about Senator Obama's uh improbable run right yeah. oh gosh yeah. i wanted to go because i lived fairly close and i was like can i can i figure out a way to like go drive down to springfield and be there for it I, but so mm -hmm. i i came out of the pessimism of the evangelical world that i grew up in and i was like yeah we're changing the world we yes we can yes we can mm -hmm. and, you know and my involvement in politics since has you know perhaps made me slightly more pessim <laughs> pessimistic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but you know at the same time i think while i do have some more pessimism in that sense that i do also find once again more optimism because of like the things that you were talking about that yeah. while i may have become pessimistic about the traditional understandings of the barometers for humanity that i should have belief in that if i actually look at everyday people i see the amazing things that they're doing um mm -hmm. and the ways that they're trying to overcome challenges so mm -hmm. what about though on a on a more personal level has aging in our in our wise old years um has <laughs> aging allowed you to be more or less faithful to your true self i feel like this one's a little bit too easy for me so i'm gonna um, let, let you go first <laughs> um so really interested to hear your answer but um yeah i'm happy to um i'm happy to you know my experience yes yeah. So, I mean, I'm um, in a, just a, a little bit over a month, I'll be 26. So I've been in, you know, one of those parts of life that comes just inherently with a lot of different transitions. And I've lived in four, diff four very different parts of the country, Chicago, the Twin Cities, DC, and New York. And I feel like I've kind of encountered different parts of myself in each of those places and have been able to explore which of them feels more more authentic as I move through that and I think that having all those different experiences and trying on different roles and expressions of you know how I want to engage with the world has given me a lot of insight into how to be more faithful to myself. And um, I've, it's interesting like how, you know, I, I've kind of 
when I was younger, I felt like a, a pressure to like demonstrate that I could be really serious, especially when I really thought that I wanted to go down the academic career route and pursue a PhD. I felt like I needed to, you know, have this kind of like studious persona. And I realized that that's not what I want and have been able to kind of dip back into you know, things that have been a part of me for a really long time. And I'm a lot more comfortable talking about just my, you know, my love of comedy and skateboarding and hip hop and things like that, that might not be like, you know, taken as seriously in certain uh, intellectual or professionalistic contexts. And so like, that has been, that's been really freeing. Um, and a great thing about being at, at fourth U is knowing that that's something that, you know, I can share with people and that, you know, will it, it will like enrich the conversation because people share with me about like who they really are. And that's been a, a moving experience. Before I dive into the, uh, to the more obvious, <laughs> the more obvious life changes that have helped me feel more true to myself as I aged, um, mm -hmm. that the one about, um, education though, actually hit home a little bit for me too. Mm. Um, and you know, if I'm, if I'm interpreting it through the most millennial lens possible, which is Harry Potter houses, uh, <laughs> is that, you know, I, I definitely like growing up, I was, I was, I mean, I still am a very big perfectionist. It's probably mm. pretty core. I don't know. Yeah. I was good. Um, <laughs> but it's part of who I am, whether I like it or not. Um, mm -hmm. and that definitely applied academically that I was the, the, um, you know, if we're talking about my, my younger sister and her very different experiences, she had the poor unfortunateness of having to follow in the smart older sibling footsteps, um, mm -hmm. which is never fun, I imagine. Um, and so, you know, I, my, I, yeah. I just assumed I was a Ravenclaw because I like, so I, I did a lot of school stuff and that was what I did. And I did school and I wrote papers and I did school and I wrote papers and more school and more papers and yeah. a second master's degree. Um, why not a PhD? Um, and in the, in the last few years, I have started to unpack like, oh, you know, the, the academic competitivity, maybe that was actually trauma over trying to be the best. Um, and not actually because I just enjoy doing the academics. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then I came to the realization that I am in fact a Slytherin because what I do enjoy is like connections and like understanding how people work and like trying to figure out how to yeah. be the best. Um, still perfectionism. Um, <laughs> but um, so that's my very millennial lens. But you know, obviously, like coming out as trans um, or coming out of the evangelical world and now moving all the way. I mean, growing up, uh, I would have growing up young, young me would have called uh, current me, a, you know, a, a sinner, a heretic. Um, <laughs> wow. um, so um, I think I, I like this version of me a lot better. Um, so um, I'm happy that I've that I've made all those those changes. But Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think, you know, there, uh, oh gosh, someone, it was, it was, I think it was the TikTok, you know, cause I got to stay hip and cool. So I'm on the TikToks. Uh, <laughs> there was a, a, a video that was songs from 21 years ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm, I'm old now. Um, <laughs> and, um, but it, it made me think of, you know, it, like they're the way that you can hear a song and like instantly flash back to like your teenage years and like, be like, I remember like where I was when I heard this song, like the first time. And um, I remember listening to this with this friend and like while doing this thing. And, you know, I think that, you know, I remember when I turned 18 and I was like, you know, why? Like, you know, I think that there is a fair amount of disrespect that's thrown towards teenagers. I would completely agree with that. But also at the same time, our society, ex like, you know, we, we were forced into signing student loan agreements, not knowing what that actually like would imply for the rest of our lives. We're just told like, oh, that's, yeah, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that I, I have learned so much more in the 15 years since I 
turned 18 like the, <clears throat> it's it's something that mm -hmm. you know that that life experience has helped me be truer to myself because i've been able to start unpacking the things that held me back as a as a teenager as a young kid and you know at this point hopefully also beginning to heal from them so um, yeah. i think that's you know important to name too but yeah. yeah it turns out aging isn't half bad um yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'm curious. I'd be curious in the comments. We'd we'd of course love to hear from any of our our boomers. I guess even the Gen Xs. You know, everyone likes to sweep them under the rug. So we'll let you come through. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or the Gen Zs. We have um, yeah. some amazing young folks in our congregation. Or I don't know. They're calling it Generation Alpha. Is what I'm hearing for like the newest one. Um, so like my kids would be that. Like the the younger kids of millennials would be gen okay. z gen alphas whereas like the kids of gen x this is not you know this is if you guys want a video about generational divides and differences we can gladly um talk about that if you leave us the comments telling us and then i'll get ben and we'll talk about generations in our next video um, yeah but um I, yeah I'm, I'm curious how people feel that aging has impacted their own personal growth i, I think it's a fascinating question to consider so Ben, thanks so much for, for hopping on today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This has been really fun and really interesting. And thank you to all of our listeners, no matter what generation you're a part of. Mm -hmm.